George Floyd's murder. Unless you don't have any kind of social media and TV, you've probably heard the name George Floyd uttered at least once. George Floyd's murder has taken the world by storm even faster than the COVID-19 pandemic did, and with good reason. Welcome to Curious Minds. Make sure to stay until the end of our video to learn all the chances of discrimination ending after George Floyd's murder. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to turn notifications on. Before we begin with our analysis, it's important to understand the complete background of what actually happened. On May 25, 2020, George Floyd was a 46-year-old man, died handcuffed in Minneapolis while police officer Derek Chauvin knelt on his neck for nearly nine minutes. Floyd had been arrested on suspicion of using a counterfeit bill. During the act, Floyd kept begging for his life and kept saying, I can't breathe, as he was left out cold motionless and with no pulse. The onlookers kept pleading for Chauvin to remove his knee from Floyd's neck, something he didn't even attempt to do. Medics arrived to treat Floyd, but by that time, which was around 9.25 p.m., he was already dead. The police claimed that Floyd had resisted the arrest, which is the reason that led to the unfortunate circumstances. But other merchants around the area provided security camera footage and cell phone videos that clearly showed otherwise. While Floyd has influenced the world more after his death than during his life, other African-American leaders have also worked towards creating a world free of the shackles of racism and racial discrimination. For example, we have Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest athletes in the world. Ali was a boxing champion that refused to be drafted into the Vietnam War, causing his title to be revoked. Ali was an Olympic gold medalist and the first fighter to obtain the heavyweight title three times. Another important black leader is definitely Maya Angelou, an American author, actress, screenwriter, and civil rights activist who published her 1969 memoir, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, a groundbreaking installment of literary history as it was the first nonfiction bestseller by an African-American woman. Barack Obama was the first African-American U.S. president. And let's not forget Rosa Parks, known as the mother of the civil rights movement from the moment she refused to give up her bus seat to a white man in Montgomery. Floyd's death sparked the George Floyd protests, most of which have been peaceful, but some of which have caused rioting, looting, street skirmishes, and, ironically, even more police brutality which we've seen in graphic detail in social media. Outside the United States, protests against the killing of George Floyd, racism, and police brutality also took place, notably in the cities of Auckland, Barcelona, Berlin, Brisbane, Madrid, Copenhagen, Dublin, Accra, Lagos, Nairobi, Cape Town, Paris, Perth, Rio de Janeiro, Sydney, Tel Aviv, Seoul, Tokyo, Vienna, and Athens, as well as in the countries of Canada and the United Kingdom. Protests have taken place in at least 40 countries and on all continents except Antarctica, for kind of obvious reasons. Donald Trump threatened to deploy the US military if the mass unrest was not quelled. He said the following statement on June 3rd, if a city or state refuses to take the actions necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. However, this would also require him to invoke the Insurrection Act of 1807, a US federal law that empowers the President of the United States to use military and federal National Guard troops to suppress rebellions and insurrection. And with the COVID-19 pandemic now in its second big wave, it's probably just the spur of the moment and nothing real. While the present situation is really dark, with many protests ending up in more violence despite their purpose being precisely to stop violence, there's still hope that in the next few years, the United States will take measures to lower the police's power and increase security in black neighborhoods. So, what do you think of George Floyd's murder? Do you think it will finally put an end to racism after all? Or do you think it's yet another stepping stone for the fight against it? Only time will tell for sure. We want to create a healthy discussion about this topic so please make sure to leave your opinion in the comments down below. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share this video with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel for more great content like today. We hope you enjoyed our video, and we'll see you next time.